Hello everyone and welcome to Edic Search Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on the applied anatomy of gallbladder and bile duct. This is part two. In the previous part, we have seen in detail the anatomy and the variations in the gallbladder anatomy as well as the intrahepatic biliary tree. So in this video, we will continue our discussion and go towards the extrahepatic bile duct as well as the common channel or the ampulla and then go towards the vascular supply as well as lymphatic drainage of this area. So now coming to extrahepatic bile duct, we have already seen this diagram in parts where it's just the duodenum part of it. So as we all know, extrahepatic bile duct is 5 to 15 centimeters in length. The standard MCQ answer is 8 centimeters. The normal diameter is less than 6 mm. If it's more than 6 mm, there can be a pathology in the bile duct. It has four parts. So let us see the parts of the extrahepatic biliary tree. The supraduodenal part, which is 2.5 cm in length. Then you have the retroduodenal bile duct. In the retroduodenal part, this part is behind the D1 and gastroduodenal artery is to its left, okay? So, if you want to identify the gastroduodenal artery, this serves as a good landmark. When we come to the infraduodenal part or the part which is behind the pancreas or within the pancreas, we have to understand that this part can be covered by a tongue of pancreatic tissue in 44% of cases. It can be behind the pancreas but uncovered in 16.5% of cases and it can be completely intrapancreatic in 30% of cases. So, the infraduodenal or pancreatic part can have different courses in relation to the pancreas covered by a tongue of pancreatic tissue to completely covered in the pancreas. The fourth part of extrahepatic bile duct is the intraduodenal part, okay, or the intramural part. This has an oblique course in the second part of duodenum medial wall, and it is 1.5 centimeter in length usually. If there is an ectopic opening of this common channel or only the extrahepatic bile duct, the ectopic opening can be in the first part of duodenum or the stomach. In classical anatomy, the intraduodenal part joins the pancreatic duct at an oblique course at level of L2, L3 in the second part of duodenum. When we talk of the common channel, the normal length is less than 15 mm, which is seen in 85% of cases. If the common channel is longer, then it can result in reflux of pancreatic juice into the biliary tree and predisposes to choledocal cyst as well as the malignant cyst. It is the anomalous pancreatobiliary ductal junction that is APBDJ, right? Long common channel greater than 15 mm. All these are commonly asked questions, so memorize this slide completely. Short common channel is seen without ampulla in 5% of cases and the two ducts can operate separately. That is the extrahepatic bile duct as well as the pancreatic duct do not unite and open separately. This is seen in 9% of cases. So understand these points of common channel. We have already seen about the supraduodenal bile duct that it forms the hepatoduodenal ligament in a Mickey Mouse configuration and it is the anterior wall of the foramen of Winslow. Now, when we are discussing the common channel, we need to remember that there are three sphincters in this area. One is the sphincter to the pancreatic duct, which is sphincter pancreaticus. Other is the sphincter to the bile duct, which is sphincter of Boydens. And the third is a sphincter to the common channel, which is the sphincter of Oddite, right? So, this is something that you should remember. Sphincter of Boydens, commonly asked questions. We saw in the cystic duct, the sphincter of Lutkens, which is the sphincter in the cystic duct. Boydens is the sphincter in the common bile duct and sphincter of Odai is the ampullary sphincter. Commonly asked question. Now, when we come to common channel, we show long common channel, short common channel. Uh, angulation of opening of bile duct and pancreatic duct also results in variations in the common channel. And when there is choledocal cyst or pancreatic duct which is dilated, a COMI classification is there. 
commonly asked in exams, there are basically three types. You can see a lot of diagrams, but basically type 1 is where the bile duct opens at right angle to pancreatic duct with or without pancreatic duct dilatation, that is A and B. Type 2 is where it is opening at an acute angle with a cholecystal cyst. And type 3 is where you have pancreas division or absent pancreatic duct with cholecystal cyst, right? So, the different ways in which the common channel is formed or not formed, pancreatic duct is formed or not formed, very commonly asked question in exam and very important if you want to operate on cholecystal cyst is the Comey classification. Going to arterial supply for gallbladder, it's easy. It's the cystic artery, which is usually the branch of right hepatic artery. The dominant blood supply to bile duct is from the arteries and not from the portal vein. This is in contrast to hepatocytes, which have a dual blood supply. The biliary tree only has supply from the hepatic artery as well as the other arteries in the area. The weakest area of blood supply is the supraduodenal bile duct and that is why biliary strictures are very common in this area. Now, if you see this diagram, the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock arteries are known as marginal arteries or also known as paracoledocal arteries. Remember that there are two plexuses around the bile duct. One is paracoledocal and the other is epicoledocal. So, 3 and 9 o'clock marginal arteries are the arteries which supply tweaks to the paracoledocal plexus. From the paracoledocal arteries, you get epicoledocal arteries. Okay, para is besides, epi is on, right? So, para, then epi, and these then pierce the wall, resulting in intramural arteries and subepithelial plexuses. So remember this sequence of vessels in the bile duct, very important and very commonly asked in exam. You have arch arteries, you have marginal arteries, okay. And these three and nine o'clock arteries are formed by descending branches as well as ascending branches. So as we see, the bile duct is like a bridge between liver and pancreas. So, it will get supply from blood vessels of liver and it will get supply from blood vessels of pancreas. So, from below, you get ascending branches. From above, you get descending branches, right? Ascending arteries are basically liver. So, right hepatic, left hepatic and cystic arteries, these give descending branches, which provide around one third of the total arterial supply of the bile duct, whereas ascending branches provide two third of the blood supply of the bile duct and these receive branches from posterior superior pancreatico duodenal artery, retroportal artery, supraduodenal artery and gastroduodenal artery. So these are the branches which supply the bile duct from below. So ascending branches which provide around 68% of the blood supply of the bile duct whereas descending branches provide one third of the supply of the bile duct. What is retroportal artery? Commonly asked question. So, retroportal artery arises from superior mesenteric artery more commonly than celiac axis and supplies the bile duct and it forms a collateral circulation between right hepatic artery and SMA or celiac axis or posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery and SMA or celiac axis. So, that is the retroportal artery. Don't worry about these vessels. If you don't understand these branches, we will have a separate video on these branches as well. We have already discussed the GDA. So, we will discuss these branches in a separate video as well. But for bile duct blood supply, you need to remember the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock marginal arteries. Now, there are two types of circulation in the bile duct. One is axial type and the other is ladder type. So, what we have discussed so far is a ladder type of circulation. Okay, You have the right ladder and the left ladder, which is the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock artery, which are the paracoledocal arteries. Sometimes you can only have axial vessels. That is, you only have arc type of vessels and these are the right and or left arc arteries. Right? So, based on the arc arteries versus the marginal arteries or presence of both, there are around five to six different types of biliary circulations. But basically, they are axial left, axial right, 
ladder left, ladder right, and then different permutations and combinations of XGL and ladder. Okay, this was given by Rath et al. If you are interested, you can view that article in detail. But remember that there are right and left arch arteries also if it is an axial type of circulation. Now going towards the hilum, there is a communicating arcade which is formed by the marginal arteries, the left hepatic artery segment 4. S4 is the segment 4 artery, right anterior sectoral artery or right hepatic artery. Okay, So at the hilum, we many times say in our surgery that anastomose at the hilum to avoid strictures in cases of biliary injury. The reason is this marginal artery, okay, the communicating arcade, which is also known as the transverse hilar marginal artery or caudate arcade, okay. This transverse hilar marginal artery has blood supply from both sides of liver. The most constant blood supply to this is from the segment 4 artery, okay, and that is why base of segment 4 anastomosis of bile duct to jejunum is the most vascular anastomosis that you can have for the biliary injury cases. So what forms the transverse hilar marginal artery? Segment 4 artery is the most common contributor. If it is not, then left hepatic artery. On the right side, it is right anterior sector artery or right hepatic artery, right? So this is basically an overview of the blood supply of bile duct, very commonly asked question. Now going into venous drainage, the arteries and the veins follow each other. So similarly for the veins, in reverse order, you have the subepithelial plexus, which supplies the intramural plexus through the perforators. It goes into the epicoledocal plexus and from there it goes into the paracoledocal plexus, right? Here you have named plexuses. The paracoledocal plexus is plexus of pattern P for P and the epicoledocal is plexus of saint commonly asked questions. So remember these two terminologies, epicoledocal plexus of saint and paracoledocal plexus of petrol. Major drainage of bile duct is into the portal vein, which is left gastric vein, posterior, superior, pancreaticoduodenal vein and gastrocolic trunk. Cystic vein drains into 9 o'clock marginal vein. This is an important MCQ. Cystic vein drains into 9 o'clock marginal vein. And 3 o'clock marginal vein drains into right gastric vein. Now going to lymphatic drainage, very important when it comes to malignancy in this area. N1 in the previous AJCC was cystic nodes and pericoledocal nodes then became retroportal nodes and posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal nodes. All the retroduodenal nodes, till this area it is N2 and superior mesenteric and interaortocaval nodes are M1, so metastatic disease. In the latest AJCC, N1 and N2 is different. N1 is less than four regional nodes which are positive. N2 is four or more regional nodes that are positive. And SMA or interaortocaval nodes are still metastatic disease. Pathway of lymphatic drainage, and this is important because when you are operating, you need to remove all these nodes. The cystic nodes, then pericoledocal nodes, then retroportal right celiac as well as posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal nodes. From there, it goes into retroduodenal and superior mesenteric nodes, interaortocaval nodes. So all these nodes usually we remove. If interaortocaval or SMA node is positive, it is metastatic disease and usually the surgery is not proceeded, right? So this is basically the lymphatic drainage in this area that is important to remember. When it comes to nerve supply, we know there is a cystic plexus that is formed by sympathetic fibers of T7 to T9 and parasympathetic fibers from right and left vagus now also as supplied from right phrenic now. And this is the basis of referred pain of gallbladder which goes to the inferior angle of the right scapula, sympathetic fibers and tip of right shoulder through the phrenic now. Epigastric pain or pain referred to stomach is through the vagus nerve. So this is the basis of referred pain of gallbladder stones or gallbladder cholecystitis. Right scapula inferior angle, tip of right shoulder, commonly asked question. 
So this basically covers the entire biliary anatomy in two videos. We have covered all the practical points as well as the questions that are commonly asked in exam in a very practical manner. I hope that this clears your anatomy of this area and something that you need to remember for life. In future anatomy sessions also, we will discuss the various abdominal organs as well as rest of the body in similar manner so that it becomes very easy to remember this stuff. Thank you.